Today's tablescape, as you can see, is jewelry. I've displayed gold jewelry, silver jewelry, and costume jewelry, and that's how I wear it. I want to tell you how I shop for jewelry on a budget. Now, I tend to stay away from the chain stores, and I have built a relationship with three local independent stores. And what I like about all three is they all allow layaway, which I love because I can pay as I go on my budget. Now let me tell you a little bit about all three and then of course I have a story to tell about jewelry shopping and then I'll also get into telling you some facts about jewelry that I've learned from interviewing two of the jewelry store owners. Okay, first and foremost, I tend to shop at a pawn shop. I also tend to shop at a gemologist store. Then I shop also at a jewelry store that carries classic and estate jewelry. Now let's go back to the pawn shop. The pawn shop, I feel I tend to get great savings. I also get quality jewelry. And because I have a relationship with the owner, I can trust that what I'm buying is quality jewelry. Win-win situation for me. Now, Generally speaking, the only time I deal with my gemologist is if I'm looking for a particular stone. That's what he specializes in. I have a relationship with him. I trust him. And if I see or if I have in my mind something that does not exist in his shop, he can design it for me. Okay, great. The third is a jewelry store that carries classic jewelry, estate jewelry, and whenever I'm tired of my jewelry, I can trade my jewelry in on something else, and I love that. I have a quick story. Now, in one of my other videos, I said that I stay open here and here when I go out because I never know if the Lord is going to use me to be a blessing to somebody else or to be open to receiving a blessing. Well, on this particular day that I was up at um, the gemologist, his store, um, he was busy. When I went in, he was busy. He and his wife, they had customers. So I went to the left where there was another jewelry case and there was another um, person there looking. Well, because I've never met a stranger, she and I started a conversation and she was in the process of buying a piece of jewelry, but she was also waiting for a phone call because her daughter who lived in another state was any day now having a baby and she couldn't wait to go and see her grandchild. So the conversation proceeded about me and children and her children and grandchildren. And long story short, she asked me about my children. And at that point in time, my baby was in college. And I said what college he attended. And I also said she said well what was he studying and i told her and she stopped and she said my daughter is so and so in that department and i said oh okay i said my son's right now in the process of applying for um summer internships and um we just chit chatted and i loved her jewelry and all and for no particular reason, she said, 
why don't you have your son go to my daughter's office if I give you her name and number and all, and if he needs anything in this area, let her know. And I proceeded to say, oh, thank you, okay. And just as I was getting ready to say to her, it was nice meeting you and congratulations on your new grandchild. Just as I got ready to turn, she touched me and she said, you know what? I can do better than that. And she pulled out her phone and she proceeded to text the daughter. The daughter texts back and says, tell him to contact me and if I can't help him, so-and-so can help him. Make a long story short, it turns out that this lady that I just struck up a conversation with had somebody in all the right positions at the college that my son attended. She didn't know me from a can of paint. A nephew, a daughter, a cousin. Again, all the right positions at the college my son attended. I say all that to say I was open that day and I received that blessing and she was a blessing to my family. So I say how I shop for jewelry on a budget is again, I develop a relationship with the owners because they're gonna give me a deal if I'm a repeat store customer. Number two, I watch their inventory on a regular basis. And once jewelry store will actually call me if something that I was talking about comes in or if they're having a special discount, which sometimes they do. And that's usually an additional 40% off. And again, as I reiterate, they all allow layaway so I can pay at my own pace. Now, I've interviewed two of the jewelry store owners to see if what I was doing added up to a real savings. And let's start here. When is the best time? This is the questions I asked two of the jewelry store owners. When is the best time to buy jewelry? And both of them answered after Christmas. You get the most bang for your buck after Christmas. Number two, where to buy jewelry? The pawn shop jewelry is secondhand jewelry, usually, and you're getting a 60 percent savings on jewelry and antiques and also they're telling me that I get a better quality a lot of the times okay I also asked them why not why shouldn't I buy at the chain stores and they're telling me that the chain stores can't afford to give me the type of discount that an independent jewelry store can because of the overhead. Their overhead's too big. Okay? Then I asked, what am I getting at the independent jewelry store? They proceeded to say better customer service and true to what I was asking, better pricing for repeat customers. And they said, yes, it is important to develop a relationship with an independent store owner. It does make a difference. Okay? 
One last question that I had was, what is the markup on jewelry? They told me silver is three to four times the cost. Gold is two to two and a half times the cost. And diamonds is two times the cost. One other thing that my gemologist said to me is, which I asked, how can I tell the quality of a diamond? And he said, because of the internet now, you can actually study up on how to tell the quality of your diamonds. He said, anybody can go to the GIA online and also Blue Now online and you can study up on the quality of the diamonds. The pawn shop owner told me that if the diamond is larger than a carat, it should come with papers stating the quality of it. So I hope that has been informative to you and it, it was to me because I just bought jewelry just the way that I've always bought it, but I see in interviewing them how I've learned a lot and I was on the right path to continuing to buy jewelry on a budget. Now, you'll see here what I have displayed on um, my bags. And what I, like I said, when I intro, did the intro, what I generally speaking do is I mix mines. I mix my jewelry. For instance, on my hands I have real gold. Around my neck, this is costume jewelry and this was actually made by Ralph Lauren. But this is a go-to for me. You'll see this piece a lot because it's, it's uh, classic, timeless, and I tend to grab it um, and put it on a lot with, like I said, even my real jewelry. And I just have, like I said, a lot of costume and real jewelry displayed. For instance, because I was pleased with the Ralph Lauren jewelry, I just bought, probably about a month or two ago, another signature piece of uh, Ralph Lauren. I haven't worn it yet, but it's the, um, uh, the chain with the pendant and then the um, stud earrings. Now I know some people like hoops. Um, I tend to wear studs, but it's just whatever your taste is. In closing, I wanna reference, even though I don't have my scripture here today, I wanna reference Philippians 4 and 11. And I'm going to paraphrase what it says. But what it says and what it means to me is, in any state that you're in, be content. Now today, I display jewelry. But I want to say this about jewelry. In that scripture, for me, it means at whatever level you are be content and for me when i couldn't afford real jewelry i wore costume jewelry and i still wear costume jewelry so i still say that again be content at whatever level you're in in your life and until next time, be blessed.